All right, let's open our Bibles quickly to the book of Psalm chapter 63. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, briefly, we'll be teaching here spiritual hunger and passion. Unveiling spiritual hunger and passion. I want to say a big thank you to all the campus pastors all across the nation. Hallelujah. From the Abuja campus watching us. A big thank you to Pastor Handsome and the leadership there. Please help us appreciate the Abuja campus watching us. The Antony campus, Pastor Soji and the team. And of course, the, um, the, the Keja campus, Pastor Mayo and the team. And of course, my lovely pastor and boss, Pastor Dyer and his team from the Bagada campus. And every other campus, I salute you. God bless you. Thank you for all you do. All right, Psalm chapter 63 from verse 1 to 4. And by the help of the Spirit, we'll be teaching there spiritual hunger and passion. Then we'll pray towards the end of the service. Scripture says, O God, thou art my God. Heli will I seek you or seek thee there. My soul, my to my soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2, very quickly here. It said, to see thy power and thy glory. He said, as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. It is very important that as we look into this scripture, I mean, before I started this sermon, the Lord said unto me, it said, um, say unto them that this um, conference awakening we mark a new beginning in your spiritual walk. Amen. Yes, he said to me. So I just quickly said I should drop that. So scripture says there, and it is very important to understand the person that was um, having this discussion and the state of life that um, this great man called David was when he was having this discussion with the Lord. David was not a small man. David was a man of great repute and great result. As a matter of fact, in the season of this life, when he was given this, um, you know, recitation and, his, um, and documentation of the heart, David was a man with gallant results. So he was not saying this in the days of his lowness. He was not saying this in the days of his, you know, in the days of his depravity of, of, of revelation of, of results. But he was saying it when he was bowling. Is someone hearing me here? You know when someone is bowling. He was saying it when the results were heavy. Hallelujah. He said uh, that to seek your power, O God. Hallelujah. Go to verse 1. Verse 1, very quickly here. It's verse 1. He said, For thou, O God, early will I seek you. And it is very important, that's where I want to start from, that it is very important for every believer to know that the early part of your life is a very powerful part of your life. It's on the enemy here. It is very powerful to find God in the early part of your life. As a matter of fact, in the early part of anything, it is very powerful to seek the Lord. In the early part of anything. And everybody here seated today, we are the early part of our life. And David was explaining a mystery here that made him a friend of God. A mystery here that made him, you know, a, 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 a covenant a, a practitioner of, of, of the kingdom of God. He said, early will I seek you, O God. And if you want to understand that scripture very well, you will go to the book of Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, where scripture says, And Jesus rose up early in the morning to go and pray. Jesus often had a custom. He said, in the morning, he rose up a great while before day. He went out to go and pray. Early in the morning, uh, the psalmist also said, Early in the morning will Allah send my voice unto you, O God. So it is important. That every believer, you don't joke with the early part of your life. You don't hear me here. You don't joke with the early part of your life. Else, life will question you when you finally show up. When a 35-year-old man decides to now visit the nursery school to resume school, then even the chairs will ask him questions. <laughs> you hear me? Even if you, if you feel like you want to go, the chairs will tell you that you have missed the time. So it's very important, the early part of your relationship to seek the Lord. The early part of your business to seek the Lord. The early part of your life. Early in the morning will I send my voice unto you, O God. Not when the strength is fading away. Scripture said it is good for a youth to bear his yoke while he's what? While he's young. Hallelujah. To bear it while he's young. This is the best time to seek the Lord. He didn't say late at night. 
He didn't say in the afternoon. He said early in the morning. My brother, early in the morning. Early in the morning. Right where you are right now, this is the best time to seek the Lord. He said early in the morning, will I seek you, O God. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now go to John verse 1. DJ. 63 verse 1. We're going somewhere here. Follow me carefully. Psalm 63 verse 1. Early in the morning, will I seek you, O God. He now said something very powerful there. Psalm 63 verse 1. DJ, let God use you. We are taking a lot of scriptures, so you have to let God use it. He said, my soul thirsts for you. Now, he didn't say my spirit thirsts for you. Is someone hearing me? He didn't say my spirit thirsts for you. He said my soul thirsts for you. Now, this is the challenge with new creation believers. The challenge with new creation believers is the fact that we try to claim our righteousness and the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know those your recitation, you know, I am who God says I am. And no, no, this is not what, that, that is the settlement of your spirit. Your spirit is born again. But there is a contending for your soul. Did you get what I'm saying here? Spiritual hunger necessarily does not have to deal with the state of the spirit. Because the spirit of a man is born again, is renewed. Hallelujah. The spirit of a man has been rejuvenated rather. So it is not a matter of whether you are the righteousness of, of Christ in righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's not what we are saying here. What the psalmist is saying here is the fact that there is a contending for your soul. He said, my soul tests for you. Which means there is a way your soul can test after God. The soul. Did you get what I'm saying here? Woo! Hallelujah. There is a way the soul can test. And li listen to me. You see, the, 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 the mathematics of the testing of the soul is predicated upon what I call time. The, the devil is in his, in his foolish wisdom knows that the only thing he can use to get the soul of a man is the time of the man. Is someone hearing me here? It's time. Time is the unit measurement of life. Did you get what I'm saying here? Time is the unit measurement of life. So the devil knows that to gain access into the soul of a man, what you need to do is to occupy the time of the man. Anything that occupies your time occupies your soul. And anything that occupies your soul will later affect your spirit. And when your spirit is occupied by nothing that is not of God, then you are under an attack. My soul longs for you. He now goes further and says, My flesh. This is a point where some believers, we sometimes don't come to understand that the way your flesh can long for food, your flesh can long for sex, your flesh can long for money, your flesh can long for the Lord. The result of the flesh of the soul longing for God is what we call soul renewal. The result of the flesh longing for God is what we call the death of the flesh. David knew something. That if you understand the story of David, then you know that he couldn't but have mentioned the flesh. He was a man that loves women. Adib, he tried. He tried. He, he, he loved women so much that he saw another man's wife and sent the man to go and front a battle. He, it was a strategy to kill him. He said, this one, I, I, the king has put his leg on it. So, when in the communication of his hunger to God, he did not leave out the fact that your soul will fight for the room that God wants to take in your life and your flesh will fight for it. Always remember that every Adam, no matter the instruction that he receives from God, the flesh still has capacity to beckon upon him. Adam received an instruction, but flesh reduces the instruction. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Which means you can have an instruction from God. But when your soul is not dealt with and your flesh is not tamed, the instruction can look like a documentary. 
Why you know that God spoke to you, but your flesh can trap on it? Your flesh. I, I, haven't you known that God said premarital sex is not good? You know. Don't, don't you know? <laughs> so, a flesh that is not tamed is superior to any instruction that you received. Did you come say here? You might be hearing message like this 247 on holiness. 247. But when the flesh speaks and you don't have the capacity to tame the flesh, while you are hearing the message, you are still committing the act. Is someone hearing me here? So David did not leave out. He said, I understand my spirit as David, a prophet and a king. One who has a stand with the Lord. Hope you know that after sometimes after David committed such act, he will still stand in the in the in the in the capacity of a king to administer priestly roles. But but he just finished a woman, a man's wife on the bed. He, he just did that. But he, he can still stand. So so this soul and this flesh thing, it doesn't cover anointing, sir. Your anointing can be speaking and you are messing up. Did you get what I'm saying here? This is the reason why people feel that their ministry can still continue while they are continuing sin. Paul said, can we sin? Can we continue to sin and grace about? He didn't say, can we sin and grace up? Can we continue? Which means you can be continuing sin and you are still seeing some traces of grace. It's not the minutes that you switch off a fan from the circuit that is stop rolling. It's not the minute. Sometimes the fan still keeps moving. Now, 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 listen to me. What I'm saying, I'm not preaching to you. I'm telling you even I'm preaching to myself. So he's not, he's not, pastor, pastor has, has, has survived it. <laughs> you, you know yourself now. Some of you, when you walk into church, even we pastor, we have to, we have to stand. <laughs> I was preaching one day. Right here in this church. Right here. Pastor Mo, don't like, don't laugh too much. Don't, 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 don't help me. I was preaching. When a sister walked in. My God. And the ushers, you need to help us. The ushers led us straight to the front. <laughs> My God. I kid you not. For 10 seconds, I was repeating the same thing. People thought I was, I was emphasizing on a point. It, was, it wasn't a point. It was the fact that the soul was, was derailing. The, the, soul, the soul was going. The soul was going. Until a point, I, I had to, my, my brother, come back. <laughs> come, come, come back. You, you understand me, sir? Let me run. Let me run. Let me stop preaching. Let me run. Thank you, Jesus. So, so he made mention of the soul and he made mention of the flesh in a dry and weary land when there is no water. That I may see your face, oh God, as I see in the sanctuary. Which means it means that what I've seen in the sanctuary, that it will become my personal experience. I have seen God in the sanctuary. But how can I take the experience to my bedroom? How can I take the experience to my house? How can I take the experience to my company? Listen to me. Whatever makes you fall in church under the anointing, the same experience will continue at home. He said, as I have seen in the sanctuary, I ought to repeat the same in my house. This was the cry of a man called David. Femi kwaste fele mumpai luve la salida. Spiritual hunger is a sign of spiritual health. Did you know what I'm saying here? When someone is hungry, it means that the person is healthy. Are you getting me now? Loss of appetite is a proof that you, are, you, are, you need help. When a baby is not eating, then you know something is wrong. 
Loss of appetite is a proof of ailment. It's a proof of sickness. Spiritual hunger is a proof of spiritual health. The fact that a believer is not hungry, it means that the believer is under attack. Did you get what I'm saying here? Aparos kefele madu sheleva ha. The fact that you are not hungry means that you are under an intense attack. Spiritual hunger is the measure of your spiritual health. Secondly, hunger is determined by the size of your bowel. And motivated by the size of your future bowel. So, so, so when, when, when I bring you food right now, there is a kind of food that I can eat. Then if you see one of my brothers that I will not mention his name, that, that there's a kind of food that he can eat. The brother knows himself. He's already in the hall. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is determined by the size of your destiny. I'm motivated by the size of your future destiny. The fact that you are not hungry shows that your size, your present size is low. There is little to what you can accomplish. Then it shows that your future size is nothing to write home about. It shows that you are not going anywhere. Listen to me. What I am saying here pertains to kingdom. This matter is not a salvation matter. We have left salvation. We are talking about kingdom things. Because a man that was a pastor, he doesn't know. No, no, no. I, 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 that's for primary school. This is kingdom matters, family matters. In this kingdom, your spiritual hunger is the measure of your spiritual health. It's determined by your present capacity, motivated by your future capacity. Whatsoever you want to do in God, you have to be hungry for it first. Did you hear what I'm saying here? I have to round up now. Whatsoever you can, you have to be hungry. And listen to me, spiritual hunger is not God-stimulated. Spiritual hunger is self-stimulated. God, I need you to get this. I need to get this. Go to Adia. Go to Acts chapter 2. Verse 4. I want to show you something about spiritual hunger. It, it, it's not God motivated. Now, for people that don't speak in tongues, this is the scripture that I use. I still pray for someone a couple of days ago after hearing of it, and the lady doesn't speak in tongues. I opened the scripture to the lady, and she started speaking in tongues. Now, let me show you the power of self-motivating hunger. Now, scripture says, from verse, um, go to verse 3. Scripture says, and they appear unto them, clothing, you know the story. And they appear unto the clothing of tongues like a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4 is where I'm going. And scripture says, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. Now, read this. Follow me. And they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, the Septuagint rendition of this scripture reads it this way. And they began to speak in tongues even as the Spirit supplied utterance. Let me give you what that means. What that means is you have a nine-month-old baby who have been seeing everybody walking at home. They walk on their two legs. I'm, how come I'm crawling? He begins to ask himself, how come I'm crawling? Everybody walks on two legs. How come I'm crawling? Now, the father will not wake up one day and say, start walking. No. The baby of himself is self-motivated and got to walk. By the reason of the community of workers at home. Did you get what I'm saying here? One of the reasons why you are not hungry, the people around you are too empty. They, 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 they are not hungry. You can't walk with an hungry man and you not be walk hungry. Have you ever walked with someone that says, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. You don't feel like eating. But when you get to a place, you say, give me one cup. Because hunger is contagious. It's on the enemy here. So the baby stands one day and begins to take a step. And begin to take a step. A responsible parent will not do what scripture now says. Ask the spirit supply. So a responsible daddy will now say, come. Oh, if this is where we end today, I, I, I believe God is beckoning us someone. A responsible mommy will stand afar. God will not move to where you are. 
it will show you what you can do. Is someone hearing me here today? I come within the powers of the spirit to tell you that you can raise the dead. To tell you that you can give eyes to the blind. To tell you that you can pray on NLP. To tell you that you can lay hands on the sick. A responsible father will stand and say, when God come. That's what scripture says. And the church and the bride beckon upon them. Come.